Chapter 2 Morphothocines Prior to Projection Wednesday, July 18th, 1979 I went to bed physically tired at 10.35pm. Extra physical period. I awoke outside the soma, next to a few extra physical consciousnesses whom I had met when they had undergone a treatment program a while back. Among the five extra physical consciousnesses, one stood out, a tall man with straight hair and an aristocratic nose wearing a large shawl as if it were a cape. It was clear that he was a sick male consciousness in convalescence, but endowed with an intense mental power to sculpt morphothocines, thought forms, which he composed and animated at will. I recognised the extraphysical consciousness to be Carnot, an eccentric friend from my childhood in Monte Carmelo, my birthplace in the state of Minas Gerais, Brazil. He was there recuperating from a prolonged psychopathology by exercising the beneficial use of morphothocines, providing entertainment for extraphysical consciousnesses needing distraction in order to help them recover. This was leisure activity functioning in favour of evolution of the consciousness. It was said that Carnot was a person who had gone insane due to excessive study. His eccentricities and appearance had changed a great deal. He performed a few demonstrations using the power of thought and appeared fully capable of performing the wonders of Mandrake the Magician. Since energy can be influenced by thought, it can be used to produce instantaneous wonders for one who is capable of controlling it. Carnot manufactured extravagant extra-physical clothes, alternately dressing himself and those present with his creations. He formed incredibly tiny objects with lightning speed. Standing before the crowd, he devised incredibly horrible as well as beautiful masks for all present, beginning with himself. In spite of his persistent prodding, the other extra-physical consciousnesses were not able to create any objects or shapes. The process appeared to demand a lot of consensual energy, energy modified by the consciousness concentration, quick and creative thought, practice, attention to detail and an adequate environment for the energies of the one commanding the process. What would the technique be to mentally create a duplicate of the psychosoma, I wondered. In that dimension, Carnot dominates everything. He is the ruling fish in those waters an absolute wizard who abruptly turns the most unusual whims of the imagination into reality. Those present did not hide their fear of his power. It was necessary to treat him like an old friend, with understanding, not fear, just like someone who visits a hospital for the mentally ill and partakes in the jokes and childish behaviour of even the most mischievous resident. With a thousand positive thoughts, I wished that Carnot would soon recuperate in order to use his fabulous mental energy in the field of human creativity. At that point, I felt the characteristic discomfort beckoning the return to the soma. After returning, my lucid separation from the soma had lasted more than an hour. I received no suggestion to record any of the events and the period of wakefulness seemed brief like a simple interlude before another anticipated projection. Observations Following are some aspects and factors that should be observed when preparing to have a projection. 1. Bed The projector's bed should be as comfortable, stable and quiet as possible. If one does not sleep alone, it is best to use a bed that reduces interference from the movements of one's partner squeaky springs, etc. 2. Clock. The use of a digital clock is useful for noting the time your projection began and ended and the amount of time spent outside the physical body. 3. Confidence. A positive, confident and determined attitude. 4. Doors. Make sure you will not be disturbed during the projective exercise. 5. 
Extraphysical patients. Extraphysical consciousnesses may be waiting in the projectarium for energy treatments from the advanced projector. 6. Family members. Try to avoid interruptions of the projective exercise by family members. 7. Flashlight. The use of a flashlight can help the projector to write down the major points of a projection after returning to the body without disturbing their sleeping partner. 8. Intraphysical assistance. It is useful to have someone monitor the well-being of the physical body during the projective exercise. 9. Lights. Dim light, a night light for example, can be helpful in orienting the projector when he or she is projected in the bedroom, as well as upon getting up after the projection. This also reduces physical stimulus, which is counterproductive to the projective process. 10. Bedside table. A bedside table is useful for keeping such objects as paper, pencil, pen or tape recorder at hand in order to allow the projector to record extra physical events immediately upon returning to the soma. 11. Personal hygiene. Take care of physical needs before attempting to project. 12. Nourishment. Prior to the projective exercise, the projector should avoid heavy meals as well as the consumption of excessive amounts of liquids, especially those that are stimulants. 13. Nearby noises. Minimise noise. The projector may wish to turn off the telephone, intercom system, alarms, radios and TVs. Percussive noises are especially to be avoided. 14. self energization Working with energy exercises, especially the circulation and exteriorization of energy, serves to loosen the hollow chakra's energetic adhesion of the soma to the psychosoma. 15. Surroundings. Familiar, comfortable surroundings facilitate projection. 16. Thocenes. An individual's thocenes affect the profile and quality of the projection. 17. Visual reference points. It is helpful to have visual points of reference during the projection.